The other day I was building some drawers for our computer desk. In order to get nice square panels for the bottom, I turned to my homemade panel cutting jig. Now I use this in the shop almost every day. And a lot of you have written to us and asked, show us how to build one. So I thought today would be a good time. Now you can buy a commercially made panel cutter. They're expensive and they're heavy and they have more features than I really need here in the workshop. The key is to have a very lightweight jig. You'll use it all the time because you won't be dealing with something that's heavy and bulky. Now this jig was meant to ride on the left hand side of the saw blade. I'm going to make a different version this time. I'm going to flip it around so that it's on the right hand side of the saw blade. That'll give me full support. And it also means that the panel I'm cutting will be up against the fence and as I push it through the saw blade, it'll stay nice and tight in position. To get started today, I'm going to cut a new piece of plywood, a little bit wider this time. So I've got some half inch cabinet grade plywood. But before we use any power tools, let's talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now there I've just ripped the panel to 21 inches wide. One of the key elements of this jig is the hardwood strip that's screwed to the plywood bottom. The fit of that piece in the miter gauge slot determines the accuracy of the jig. Now this one, after many years of use, has developed some slight play. I want a nice snug fit. So the first thing to do is measure the slot. It will vary slightly from saw to saw. This one is just a little over three quarters of an inch. So I have a piece of cherry that I've jointed one edge and we'll rip a strip. And let's see how we are now. Yeah, still just a little bit tight, but you know, I think with a little lubrication on that, it'll be fine. Now for the thickness of the runner. I don't want it to be proud of the table surface, yet I want to get it as far into the slot as possible. That looks like about 3 eighths of an inch. The next step is to locate the strip on the plywood bottom. Now the distance from the saw blade to the slot is five and a half inches. I'm going to put a mark at six and a half inches and I'll trim the ends after the runner is installed. Using a framing square, I'll put down my layout line and I'll be ready to attach the runner. Now here I'm positioning the runner on my line with a couple spring clamps and I want to take the square once again and slide it up against the back side to make sure it's nice and straight and then I'll pre-drill for some screws. Now you'll notice I'm countersinking these because I don't want the screw to be proud of the runner. A few three-quarter inch screws will do the job holding it in place. Now we'll trim this edge which will make it parallel to the runner. Now I can install the stop, which must be square to this edge, which means it's square to the saw itself. Now it should be flush with the back edge of the panel, but I'm going to take my framing square and just confirm that. Slide it back, hold it tight up against the square, and attach it with a couple brads, and then I'll permanently affix it with some screws. Once again, I have pre-drilled holes, this time for one inch screws. Okay, now I can trim off the stop. Now let's give it a test run. If I want to cut a panel, what I would do is mark my length along the back edge and then slide it up against the fence and bring the pencil line right to the end of the stop. That way I know it's right even with the saw blade. And run it through.
Now the true test, if I've got a perfectly square cut, is to take the panel, flip it over, slide the opposite edge up against the stop, and see if it's even with the end of the jig. And it is, so we know it's square. All right, well now I've drilled a hole in it to hang it up. And this is an important tip. Hang your jigs where you can get at them. If you can't get at them, you're not going to use them. A couple years ago, I built this kitchen secretary, which features raised panel construction on the drop front and on the ends. Now, you can raise panels on a router table with a special bit, or you can raise them on a shaper. But if you have a table saw and the right jig, you can do the same thing. The jig rides on the rip fence, and with the blade tipped to the right angle, usually about 15 degrees, you take the blank stock, which is usually 3 quarters of an inch thick, run it through to do an edge, flip it over, make sure it's against the stop, run it through again. Four passes gives you a raised panel. Now, the key is to have enough height so that this will be perfectly vertical, and also to have some ability to clamp the pieces so that it's safe to push them through. Let me show you how we make one. We'll start by breaking out the panel cutter. I like to build a lot of the jigs I use out of this MDO plywood, the three-quarter inch thick stock. It has a nice smooth surface and very few voids, and it seems to be pretty stable. Now, the first thing I want to do is take this 16-inch wide piece, square one end, and then cut it to length. Okay, and I want the piece to be 28 inches long. Put a mark there. Spin it around. Line it up with the fence and cut it. These holes are needed for the bar clamp slot. I'm starting to cut the slots with the table saw. I'll finish them with my handheld jigsaw. Now I can install the stop, a piece of inch and a half wide, three quarter inch plywood. And even though I know my panel is square, I'm still going to use my framing square to confirm it. Set that in place, tack it with some brads, and permanently attach it with some screws. The next challenge is to take this part of the jig and find a way to secure it to the fence so it remains vertical, yet slides along the fence easily. Each manufacturer will create a different situation to deal with. This is the Unifence. It has a heavy aluminum extrusion. On the original that I built, I put a spacer equal to the top of the extrusion, a little filler that would squeeze against the thinner part, and finally another piece of three-quarter inch plywood, and that slides along the fence pretty nice. Now, if you happen to have a Beesmeyer fence, which has two flat sides, it gets a little bit simpler. I would take some pieces of plywood, of course, they would be the same length as the jig, and create a right angle like this, which would form a box that drops over the fence. If you have a standard issue fence, the idea is the same, except that the box becomes a little bit smaller. Now to finish up our jig, I'm going to bring the panel over to the saw, set it right on the table, and take a piece of cherry that I've planed down to the same thickness as the top of the extrusion, and attach it with a couple brads. Now I've got another piece of three-quarter inch plywood that goes on the other side of that filler. And I'll just clamp it in place for now. And that slides pretty good. Now I've taken another piece of stock and thinned it down so that it fits between the piece of plywood I just clamped on and the extrusion. This will allow me to put a couple pencil marks on. I'll take the thing apart and glue, brad, and screw it together. Finally, some holes for screws that will pull the sandwich together. Okay. Ah, that works great. Now let's make a raised panel. I'm going to use a piece of 5 8 inch straw board, and I've tipped my saw blade to 10 degrees, and I do the narrow ends of the panel first. I 
Once the saw stops, I can pull it back through, turn it on another side. Four passes will make a panel. All right, just a couple minutes, a raised panel. This is going to be a very useful jig. Last season I built this piece. It's called an English server. And it has tapered legs, which give the piece a little bit of lightness and grace. The way that I make the tapered leg is to use this tapering jig. It's a couple pieces of plywood with a hinge at one end. At the other end, there's a stop block and then this adjustment bar, which gives me quite a range of different angles. It's very difficult to taper legs freehand, and this works great. Now one of the things I've discovered in using this jig is that the side that I put the stock against sometimes gets bowed and it's also pretty flexible. So I'm going to stiffen that in the one we build now. I'm going to use a piece of this heavy duty eighth inch thick aluminum angle which I can buy at my home center or hardware store. I'm going to set it on what will become the bottom edge of that leg, clamp it in place and drill some holes for some screws. Now we'll switch to a countersink for the head of the screw. Okay, that takes care of that. Now I need to make a counterbore for the head of the bolt which operates the adjustment arm. That only has to be about 3 sixteenths of an inch deep. Here I've switched to a quarter inch diameter bit to do the through hole. Now the pivot hinge. And I'm just going to pre-drill some holes for the screws. Here I've just rounded over the ends of the adjustment bar. Now I'll sand them smooth. Here I've drilled a 5 16 inch hole at each end of the slot for the adjustment bar. I'll clean it out with my jigsaw. I'm going to fix one end of the spreader to the side of the jig that rides up against the rip fence with a one and a half inch screw. And now I can take this four and a half inch long carriage bolt, drive that through the hole, flip the jig over, install a fender washer and a wing nut. Here I'm applying a stop to one end of the jig. All right, let's give it a try. The jig goes up against the rip fence. A piece of square stock, which might be a leg, goes up against the stop. First thing I do is set the bevel that I want. And in this case, I'll just do it by eye, about that amount. Now the first part of the leg I'm going to want square, where it might meet a rail. So we'll leave that part way up. Slide the whole assembly over. Back it away and make a pass. That's one side of a tapered leg. Now to make the other side, I just turn the leg over 90 degrees and run it through. Well, there you have it, a tapered leg. That's going to be a handy jig. Several years ago, I built this carousel table. Nice spinning carousel in the middle and plenty of room around the edge for place settings. Now, you might think it's difficult to cut these nice circles for the top, that you have to lay it out and then use a jigsaw to cut it freehand and try to sand it so it looks nice and round. Well, there's a way to get perfectly round tops easily using a circle-cutting jig 
on your bandsaw. Now this is the original jig made out of some three quarter inch plywood and it's held together with some screws that sort of squeeze it onto the bandsaw table. It's supported on the far end by this woodworker's rolling support. Now how it works is that I would drill a hole along the center line for whatever the radius of the top would be and you move the pin to the hole that I want have a hole in the top and just spin it around. Now as I've found with jigs over the years there's always improvements that can be made so I think it's time to make a new circle cutting jig. I'm going to start out with another piece of three quarter inch MDO plywood. It's MDO on one side. It's as wide as the bandsaw table and it's about 42 inches long. Now the first thing I'm going to do is attach this hardwood strip which will go in the miter gauge slot of the bandsaw. And you may have to adjust yours to go in the right position and make the piece fit snugly in the slot. Let's look at the old jig. As you can see, I've drilled several different holes for the radii of the different projects. Sooner or later, I'm going to run out of holes. It would be nice to have an infinite setup from here to the end. And that's what I'm going to do on the new jig. I've set up my router with a straight cutting bit and my guide fence, and I'm going to make a dado for a nut. The idea here is to make the slot just wide enough for this nut because I don't want it to spin. So I'll have to readjust my fence and make another pass. Okay, that's perfect. Now the nut won't spin when I tighten the screw. During the last few minutes I've made a couple changes to my router. I've installed a smaller diameter bit, this time a quarter inch, and I've readjusted my fence so that I can make a through slot right down the center of that data. Let me show you how this works. What I have is a quarter inch bolt with a straight slot screw head. That goes in from the underside. Then I put the nut on, get it started, and then I can slip it into that dado and tighten it up the rest of the way. I dog it down nice and tight with the screwdriver, but the advantage is, is that I can move it up and down this slot for quite a range of different radius cuts. Now I'm just going to take a couple little blocks of plywood and these pieces of hardwood and create a little pocket into which I'll be able to put a leg. Good. Now let me show you where that's going to go. Just going to position it right on the end of the jig and I'll attach it with a few screws. Now the way this works is that a piece of six inch, three quarter inch plywood fits in that pocket and then I have a leg. Now I may not need the leg for every single tabletop, but for large heavy ones it's going to come in handy. Okay, now what I've done is made a cut in the jig. I simply placed that hardwood strip that I installed earlier in the miter gauge slot and made a pass through the saw. And what that gives me is a piece of material out here which will support the waste material as I cut tabletops. The next thing to do is to attach the jig to the cast iron table. So I'm going to clamp it in place and then drill some holes all the way through the plywood and the metal. The first pass with the drill was just a pilot hole. Now I'm going to a larger bit. I put a little bit of oil for lube. And I drill all the way through. Now I'm going to tap it for this bolt that I'm going to use to secure the top. Using a tap that you can buy at any hardware store. I just start it in with a little bit of a turn. Feel it bite. Back it off to get the waste out. Turn in a little more and so forth until we get all the way through. Okay, now if you didn't want to go through this process, you could drill a hole large enough to put a through bolt with a nut. Okay.
Okay, that's great. That's not going anywhere. Let's try it out. Let's make a 30-inch cafe tabletop out of this piece of melamine. So what I want to do is measure over from one edge, 15 inches, which is the actual radius that I'm going to work with. Then I want to take the other dimension and divide it roughly in half, which is about 15 and a half inches. Now drill a quarter inch pilot hole, but not all the way through, just enough to pick up that pin. Now I just butt my tape measure up against the bandsaw blade, slide the pin over so that it's centered at 15 inches, and tighten it down. Okay, now I just drop that pilot hole right over the pin, turn it on, and spin the blank. That works great. A perfect circle every time. Well, once again, I'm working at my shop-built router station. It's one of the most popular projects we've ever built here at the workshop. And one of the things that makes it perform so well and safely are these feather boards. They help hold the stock down to the table and up against the fence. They're very simple, pine boards with a series of slots cut in them. And if I rub my hand on there, you can see that they're very flexible. So they hold the stock down. They also keep it from kicking out. Now, the piece that I just ran was this bead detail. Without the feather boards, there's a possibility that the piece would lift up off the table, and then it would ruin the bead. This way, I'm guaranteed a perfect cut. I think it's time that we make up a few new ones. Well, I've taken some scrap pieces of poplar that I've had here at the workshop and laid out a few feather boards. This large one is going to be for the table saw so that I can clamp it, a new vertical one for the shaper, and a horizontal one. Now, for the layout, I've put a 30-degree angle on the end of each piece. And for the spacing of the cuts for the feather board, I just took a piece of scrap wood about an eighth of an inch thick and laid out a whole series of lines. They work great. Remember that website for a toolbox full of handy.